The reviews are in, and we're going to tell you what they are. He's Todd Vandenberg. I'm Rob Steele. And coming up in this episode, we've got a review of a questionable movie, a few massive snubs, and quite possibly the worst segue I'm ever going to do. At least I hope it's the worst, because this, oh, it's not good. But then again, neither were the Oscars. Um, (laughs) Not that they didn't give the awards to the right people. I'm sure they did. But there were a few things, like uh, the Visual Effects Award. Did you see the thing about this with, uh, oh, what, what were they, James Corden and Rebel Wilson? Yes. They came out to give the award for be- outstanding visual effects, and they were dressed kind of like cats, um, only they were dressed as better cats than the people in the Cats movie. Yes. And that's what they were parodying. They're just making fun of it. But the yeah, visual I think they went effects- to the Halloween store to get those. Oh, absolutely. It's But it's about as good as the movie looked. But that's not the point. The Visual Effects Society of Hollywood, and I may have that backwards somehow, um, blasted them saying, look, it's not fair that you make fun of us for this because we made exactly what the director and the producers wanted us to. And it's not our fault. They wanted crap, which I think is a brilliant way of saying, look, we made what we were supposed to make. It's not our fault. It doesn't look good, which I think is hilarious. So... Anyway, that's all there is for, 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 I think, that part of the Oscars. Anyway, um, the other part I had a problem with was the in memoriam section. Yes. Because uh, they left a few people out. Yeah, they did. Um, now, I mean, okay, the people we mentioned on the show last week, I, I get that. Because those are fresh deaths, recent. You know, I mean, if it happens that morning and that night, you've got a big thing set up. Fresh death. That That's the name of the new Steven Seagal movie. Um <laughs> And exactly what it's going to do in the box office. The, uh, I mean, if it's that recent, I understand not getting it in. But some of these people, uh, Sid Haig, left out. Right. Uh, Cameron Boyce, not there. Luke Perry, who I yeah. know was not a big movie star. He was more TV, but still. They have uh, TV people on all the time. So I was surprised by Luke by Perry, for sure. Uh, Tim Conway, not there. And mm-hmm. uh, Rene Aubergenois. Who was also, in a lot of movies as well as I mean, he wasn't just yeah. Benson and Odo. Yeah, they all every year they leave some people out, and it's just like not like you're trying to trim time. So because yeah, it's pretty odd how You'd they think, you know, someone should be things. keeping a running tally at the at, at, at the at the Academy Awards. You would think they would, but so yeah, leaving people out of the in memoriam section not a good thing. But speaking of dead things, and yes, that's my worst segue ever. Uh, later this year will mark the 20th anniversary of CSI. <laughs> See? Dead things. Dead things. Uh, so, of course, because it's the 20th anniversary, the miniseries is coming, which, you know, I'm actually kind of fine with. Um, so far, we have no clue as to which cast members are going to be in it, whether it's the Ted Danson crew, the Lauren, Lawrence Fishburne crew, or the uh, William Peterson cast. But in my head, at least, it needs to have Greg Sanders and Doc Robbins, because those are the only characters who are in every season without leaving. And the only character who was in more episodes than those two was Nick. But Nick left and went to San Diego to take a new job. So his storyline's tied up. He doesn't get it. Greg and Doc Robbins have to be in this series. They can just go to a conference and they can have all of them. Except Warwick. He's dead, man. That They can go that, to... Quantico, which is how Quantico was pronounced in a uh, audiobook I was listening to, and it's like, yeah, that's kind of a fail. It's not Quantico, anyway. Well, that's act- that that one's in Mexico. It was one of the pyramids that the Mayans built. <laughs> that must have been it. I missed that part. <laughs> Actually, speaking of things that people mispronounce often, Rami Malek, mm-hmm. right? He's going to be in the next uh, James Bond movie. Have you heard who he's playing? I have not heard who he's playing. Because this just came out. He's apparent. His character is going to. They're they're doing what they did with uh, Star Trek Into Darkness, where we've seen this character before. Look, it's 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 not Benedict Cumberbatch, Sherlock Holmes. It's Khan. Well, they're doing it again. They've given Rami Malek a different name until halfway through when someone calls him Dr. Julius No. Oh, Lord. And I'm sorry that you don't need to. That, that's why I don't like the Daniel Craig films as much, because they seem to be remaking the good Bond films, which were the ones with Sean Connery. You don't remake those. Remake Octopussy and make that work or or Moonraker or something. 
Right. We don't exactly. need Dr. No returns in no, there was the hint, time to die. <clears throat> I think that was done purposefully, actually. So, yeah, I mean, we've talked about that several times. But yeah, you don't remake great films. You remake films that miss the mark for one reason. And not necessarily saying Octopussy or Moonraker missed the mark. but They, they made did. money. But they did. Uh, but I mean, you know, as far as critically, not commercial, but the, they could have been better. And that's what you Absolutely. remake. You know, you don't remake Casablanca, for God's sakes, even though they even tried to do that. But poor James Brolin. Back, back before they. Uh, anyway, that's besides the yeah. point. Yes. Uh, let's see. Don't remake Doctor now. now. Uh, top movie of the weekend: Sonic the Hedgehog, which is apparently doing better than anyone thought it would, including us and anyone who saw the first trailer and not the second. Um, but it inspired an article on CNET, which was the forty worst video games movies ever. And I thought, I don't, I don't know that I can name forty video game movies. So of course I looked. And they cheated the bastards. Uh, they're counting however many bajillion Resident Evil movies there are and how many variations of Pokemon movies there are. That that doesn't count. I'm sorry. Lump all of that together. And somehow Super Mario Brothers was not at the top of this list, which makes no sense to me. Because if I think that may be the I, I, I think that the Super Mario Brothers movie might be the worst adaptation of anything into a film. Back me up on that. Maybe. Can you think of anything that was worse? Hmm. Uh, I actually like that movie because it's like so bizarre. bizarre. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the exact word. But I'm sure there are worse. But yeah, it's... Yeah, sorry. I sprung that one on you. Hard to think of one that's worse, literally. There's got to be one that came out at some point. Oh, I'm sure uh, there are. Like you said, 40? There's been 40? Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, Street Fighter. I think Street Fighter was worse. Was it actually, actually, that might have been the worst video game movie to ever come out. Similar to another article I found on CNN about that that was titled. The title of this article was Flash Actor Comes Out of Closet or something like that. Um, and I went, I haven't watched The Flash apart from the crossovers in a couple of seasons. Who actually was it that came out and is now fabulously um, publicly gay? I guess is that if that's the way of doing it. Um, I was like, is it Cisco? No, I can't, can't piece it. Maybe it's uh, Killer Frost. She could be the... No, it's neither of them. It's Eddie Thawne, the bad really? guy from season one who died in season one. Rick Cosnett, apparently, is the actor's name. Uh, and since he was in Flash, he was Guy in an NCIS episode and also starred in, I think it was a Hallmark movie. <laughs> the Kiss and, of Death. I'm sorry. If you want to be, If you want to come out, that's great. If CNN wants to cover it, that's fine, but... You have to go back that far back, and I'm no, don't care. Sorry, not, I'll, I'll get to not earth shaking news. No, yippee yay hui. But you know something that is earth shaking in a sense, I suppose, uh, would be the fall that this first movie I'm going to review did uh, f- dropped like a rock, hit the earth, and just kind of you know earth shaking. See, there, kind of a segue. I am referring to. Uh, now, now, bear with me because it's got multiple titles. Birds of Prey, subtitled The Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. No, that's hang on a minute. Um, <laughs> uh, Birds of Prey, The Harley Quinn Pretty Party. That That's not it either. Okay, or, seriously. Originally, it was called Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. However, in the South, people had trouble spelling fantabulous and didn't understand the concept of emancipation. So now it's called <laughs> Harley Quinn Birds of Prey. <laughs> Unless you see it on a movie poster, at which point it's still spelled every every other thing else. And, oh boy, this was definitely a DC Extended Universe movie. Brace yourself. Here's the plot. Someone has stolen a diamond. The diamond contains information that has been etched on it with a laser that uh, attaches to a massive bank account and the diamond was stolen by Cassandra Kane. Now mm. Cassandra Kane in the books is not just some kid who's a pickpocket who steals diamonds and then eats them because that's the good way to hide it. No, in the books, she is the daughter of lady Shiva who is the second biggest martial artist in the DC comics universe. Batman being number one. Yes. Above death stroke. She was trained by the League of Assassins, uh, League of Assassins, 
Uh, she became the most badass bat girl ever. Not the best detective, but the most badass bat girl. Uh, she sure as hell didn't babble incessantly because she's mute. What a concept. In this movie, no, you can't get her to shut the hell up. But that's okay. That's just one of the many problems I had with it. Um, how about a marketing idea? Harley Quinn, for some reason, goes grocery shopping with Cassandra Kane at one point. And in the store, Harley Quinn is wearing a shirt promoting the movie. I saw this shirt at, uh, where did I, I took my kids to Hot Topic yesterday and saw the same shirt Harley is wearing in this movie that just says Harley Quinn all over it. And in my head, that's kind of like, you know, watching Return of the Jedi and seeing Luke Skywalker wearing a Star Wars shirt. That it, yeah. it just it just does not make sense. Strike two of and there's uh, here. How about a foul ball? A foul ball to go with for strike three. Victor Zaz, mm -hmm. who in the books is actually a really good villain on his own. He's a serial killer who makes little tick marks on himself whenever he kills someone. You know, tick marks that one, two, three, four, and then you slash it across and you've got tick marks. And how He's many does he have? Yes. Covered in those. Covered. In the books. Which is in terrifying. This, yeah, it, it, it's a scary concept. But in this, no. He's just got a bunch of scars all over his body. I've got a scar for every person I killed. I'm sorry. That just makes you look inept. Because it looks, you gave yourself those in such a bizarre pattern. It looks like someone stabbed you before you finished killing them. <laughs> How inept are you? At I'm sorry, I'm not scared of you anymore. You know, but he's the henchman uh, for the nephew of Dennis Lawson, who played Wedge Antilles in the Star Wars movies. That's right. Ewan McGregor. <laughs> That's how I'm making him famous. Son of Wedge. <laughs> nephew of Wedge, see. But uh, he played the character Black Mask, who in the books is a scary character. In this, he reminds me of a very camp gay Donald Trump. <laughs> In that, if things don't go his way, he has a very annoying hissy fit. I'm sure he mentioned Twitter at some point. And hmm. I'm sorry. I don't know if that's purposeful or, uh, you know, in the script or something Ewan McGregor thought would work. I, I, it just it doesn't work for me. Not that there's anything wrong with being gay. I am not saying that at all whatsoever. But flamboyantly gay. Hello, flamboyantly gay. And Fear me, I am the villain of this film. Don't mix. I mean, would Darth Vader have worked if he came into the Death Star and said, Hello, everybody, I'm here. Oh, I don't like you. Force choke, force choke, like jazz hands, but different. No, he that would not sound, have been. That sounds like that's from Spaceballs instead of Star Wars. Yeah, I, it might have been. But no, it does not work. Um, let's see. Climactic issues, for there were many. Um the f next to final scene, there's a scene that was actually released online. You can find it, I think, on CNN even, uh, where there's a fight in a fun house, which has uh, trampolines everywhere and sproingy things, for lack of a better description. I'm sorry. That's what I'm calling them. I like sproingy things. <laughs> and I, outside of a comic book, I have never seen a fun house like this. If you, if you watch the movie, first off, I'm sorry, but I didn't make it. Uh, second... If you have ever seen a fun house like this, write the show and tell me where. I'm curious. I don't think they really exist. <laughs> um, but the fight scene itself, uh, not good choreography, which you'd think they would have gotten down by now. But I've seen better fights in the WWF. That's before mm. the WWE. I'm not talking about, well, actually, the World Wildlife Fund has probably got better choreography as well. <laughs> but the whole thing starts with Black Mask gathering his army to take on the birds of prey. You've got guys with guns, knives, grenades, rocket launchers, and they have a big fight in the middle of <clears throat> Gotham City, where it, it starts in this one at the fun house. Lots of things blow up. It turns into a car chase. Lots of things blow up. And I'm going to quote Jack Nicholson because this is Gotham City. And where is the Batman? The Riddler can't pick his nose in an alleyway without Batman showing up. And here's things blowing up in his city. Batgirl, Robin, Nightwing, nobody. Just Harley Quinn. Anyway. Was was Metropolis across the harbor? Like it, 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 it may as well have been. Because, mm, yeah, there'd be a lot of people who should have shown up. You'd think somebody. <laughs> but, you know, apart from all the flaws that I've picked with the story, was it an entertaining movie? Uh, no, not really. 
I mean, I saw one review that said five star. Every single person in this film did an amazing job from the actors to the FX artists to the sound scene. You name it. I'm sorry. Did we watch the same film? And speaking as an audio engineer, what the hell is a sound scene? <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm sorry. Review invalid. Um, OK, was it better than Suicide Squad? I think is the big thing that everyone wants to know. And the answer is only in that this one didn't have a sky beam. Mm. That's about wow. it. Um, it didn't help that the character of Harley Quinn doesn't impress me. Look at my blog for a much better bigger in-depth version on that steel 42.com go look at it i'll make a link on the cinema savants page which is where we are um but no harley quinn first off they were just way too many close-ups of margot robbie yes she is facially attractive but if i can tell how recently you blew your nose we are entirely too close to you <laughs> back away from the lens um geez they, there's just Harley doesn't impress me, and I'm thinking there are a lot of other really good characters, female characters, in just in the DC universe that would work, uh, make much more interesting movies. Wonder Woman 2 is coming. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I think Barda, who a lot of people don't know yet, but hey, if Guardians of the Galaxy worked. Big Barda, uh, yeah. Barda, and uh, we'd get Darkseid finally. Yay. Uh, Satana would make a great story. Poison Ivy. Give her a decent movie instead of the crap we've already gotten. Fire and Ice could make a good movie. I mentioned Lady Shiva. Um, allegedly, a Batgirl movie is coming. Uh, there's lots of DC stuff on TV. Batwoman and Supergirl are doing really good on the, what is it, the CW network. Right. Uh, the Titans have Starfire, Raven, Donna Troy, and Dove all doing really good. Mira did great in uh, Aqua, Aquaman. Uh, Stargirl is coming. All of these great female characters who I think are much more empowering than Harley Quinn was in her pity party movie. <laughs> but you know what? If you want some, some good Batman news, uh, birds of prey is not it, but there was test footage of Robert Pattinson this week in his Batman suit. And that 22nd clip was better than birds of prey. And it's free. <laughs> Save your money. Go to CNN and watch the Robert Pattinson clip. Yes. As we as we spoke in pre-pro, and that's just for you, Ted. Uh, I think we we both agree that Warner's made a drastic miscalculation because a lot of the buzz about Suicide Squad's success was people loved the character of Harley Quinn and they loved Margot Robbie, and they thought, well, if that's what drove the success of Suicide Squad, which neither one of us think is a very good movie, but it made money at the box office, which is you know kind of important if you want to stay in business. They thought, well, let's just give him Harley Quinn. And that was uh, it's hard to say that that was a miscalculation, but at least they should have given her a better movie or something. Make make her interesting. To me, she just was not interesting in this film. Yeah, that's kind of a kind of a problem. And again, that's not all about box office. But when you spend eighty five million dollars making a movie and you're entering your second week and you haven't even cleared 50 globally, not a good sign for comic book movies. From not DC, yeah. So that's not a really a, a good good thing at all. So you know what? I wouldn't mind if they just they're doing really good with the TV stuff, and I would not mind if they just stuck with the TV stuff, or if they kept on making movies like Wonder Woman and Shazam, which I don't think is a great movie, but it's an entertaining movie. I think they had absolutely the right note with Shazam and Aquaman was fun, not a great movie, but compared to some of the stuff they've released, they're much much I mean, better. I've seen worse movies than Birds of Prey, but it yeah. wasn't good. So, which, which is unfortunate. Yep, definitely unfortunate. I've seen a movie which was, in my opinion, much better than Birds of Prey. Well, almost by default, it have to. I'm sorry, I, I did say it wasn't horrible. <laughs> now, this movie wasn't wasn't horrible at all. This one you cannot see in the theaters. It came out last year, and I thought, in in honor of the Oscar winning film director. That I would watch another Korean film. So this is from the director Wan Tae Lee. This is called an interesting title: "The Gangster, The Cop, The Devil." So it came out. It's last a biopic year. of Robert De Niro in Korean. It is. It's beautiful. So <laughs> yeah, it, it has a really interesting plot. It's about a serial killer, and one cop identifies the fact that okay, there's a serial killer going on. Now the other cops don't believe him because he's kind of going out of his jurisdiction, and this serial killer randomly attacks people he randomly attacks a crime boss 
doesn't manage to kill him because this guy is a total badass. But so there is a survivor. And the crime boss, his reputation has taken a major hit because he's been attacked. He was hospitalized. And if you're a crime boss, if you're a gangster, as in the title, not a good thing if you're seen as suddenly weak. So it's imperative to him that he catch this serial killer and make him pay for it to prove that he still has the juice. He winds up teaming up with the cop. It makes sense in the context of the movie. Obviously, it wouldn't in real life, but, you know, makes sense in the context of the movie. So they're working together because the cop's not getting the support from his own department to catch the serial killer. So they work together to catch the serial killer. And that's what the movie's about. Also, a lot of the movies about the interaction between the gangster and the cop. This is a really fun movie considering it has lots of murders in it. Uh, not a funny movie at all, but it's it's a really enjoyable trip watching uh, the interaction between the cop and the gangster because they're both very aware that one is a gangster, not necessarily a good person. One is a cop and he's not the greatest person, but he's definitely all about the law and they wind up having a competition. They agree, we'll work together to catch him. But if the cop says, if I catch him, I'm taking him in. He's going to prison. The gangster says, if I catch him, I'm killing him. So, which works well because now they're having a competition. So they're even spurred even more to be the first one to catch him, even though they're working together. There's a great car chase sequence. Uh, there's some great fight sequences. Not quite as good as like the Raid Redemption, which is like the pinnacle. And if you but haven't seen that. Harley Quinn. I'm sure better than Harley Quinn. And if you haven't seen the Raid Redemption, you need to watch that. Or just think of any fight sequence of the major fight sequences in the Daredevil Netflix show, which is like off the charts, excellent fight sequences. But the gangster, the cop, the devil, really well acted. I really want to mention one of the actors in particular, Don Lee, plays the gangster. This guy is so charismatic, and he's a he's a big, beefy dude. He's very believable, and he's built like odd job. If you speaking of old school, <clears throat> excuse me, old school uh, James Bond movies, odd job in Goldfinger, built like that dude, or built like uh, Professor Turu Tanaka, or you know any of the any of the wrestlers from that era. Big, beefy, strong-looking dude, uh, but great actor. Tons of screen presence. Really, really entertaining. But I, I love the twists in this movie, uh, and it's not overly long, so you're not going to be sitting there for two and a half hours waiting for things to happen. It has a fast pace. It's a really good movie. Uh, and I did want to mention how I watched this because when I just like flipping through, trying to find something to watch, oh, this sounds really interesting. Voodoo. Highly recommend the service if you don't have Voodoo, even though Walmart owns it, and I'm not a fan of Walmart, but this is a great streaming service because they have thousands of movies for free, and they have movies that you can buy, movies that you can rent. They have sales all the time. Anyway, this movie was like four bucks on Voodoo. Like, okay, so I keep looking. If you go to Amazon Prime, if you don't know that they have channels on Amazon Prime, so you have lots of movies that are available to you, they have a new channel called the un highly unfortunate name of hi Ya as an H-I hyphen Y-A-H exclamation point. So Haya, though, has lots and hundreds and hundreds of Asian films, uh, not just action pictures, but thrillers, horror films, some dramas, et cetera, et cetera. It's $3. It's, I'm sorry, it's not $3. It's two ninety nine a month. So for... That's $3. Go, it's $3. For, for, three, for three bucks, you get a month's worth of films that are available to you, or you could just rent one for four bucks. It's like, that's kind of an easy choice. So highly recommend if you like Asian films, Haya on Amazon, and they have lots of excellent films on this, but even more so the gang, the gangster, the cop, the devil, that's one of the films in that just came out last year. Very entertaining film, a uh, high violence level, high gore level, not like Tokyo Gore Police, but which is also on Haya, but really good flick. And, Hopefully more people will branch out with the Oscar win and they'll realize, oh, I can actually watch a movie that has subtitles and because my brain can process two things at once and I can see what's going on. So, yeah, if you're one of those people who won't watch foreign films because of subtitles, it's like you have to get past that because you're missing out on a lot of terrific entertainment. The gangster, the cop, the devil, highly recommended. And amazingly, it fits perfectly between the two movies I've got this week. Because Birds of that's... Prey had a gangster and a cop. And, okay, my other movie doesn't have a devil. It's got an angel. It's got three angels. Who am I kidding? It's got lots of angels because, <laughs> well, I'll get to that in a minute. I'm referring, of course, to the 2019 incarnation of Charlie's Angels. <laughs> now, a lot of people looked at the 
trailer for this and went, oh, there's a bomb. And you'd be right. But it was better than Harley Quinn. Brace, but, but, you know, it, it, it's I, still, it was still very, very flawed. I'll start with the movie's theme song. You, do you remember the theme song for this movie? I was, try not, I try it not was to. allegedly popular. <laughs> <clears throat> was it? Allegedly. My, my daughter says it was in, in I, I don't listen to radio. Um, I've got my collection and that's what I'll listen to. Thank you. The name of the song from this movie was Don't Call Me Angel. Really? It's a it, Charlie's Angels movie. Don't call me. Are you are you sure you put this in the right film is what I'm thinking. But don't call me Angel in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess. I don't know. That song <laughs> didn't make any sense to me either. But, you know, I'll stick with the movie and get to that song at some point. <sighs> so the plot of the Charlie's Angels movie. Take Mission Impossible 4. Throw in a dash of real genius and every single CSI Miami, there's a mole storyline and put them in a blender. There you go. <laughs> I mean, seriously, that, that, that's about it. There, there's not a whole lot of plot going on here. Um, but something I kept hearing about this, and I heard this with Birds of Prey, too. It's supposed to be a girl power movie and empowering to women. But my daughter, daughter, who watched this with me, summed it up with the one word, misogynistic. Like, mm. Uh-oh. I mean, for empowered girls or women in this movie, they relied on a lot of men doing things for them, Hmm. including, by the way, Sir Patrick Stewart, who played the original Bosley, uh, who retires at the beginning of the film. But he was photoshopped into a montage for his retirement party where he was the original Bosley, the original Bosley in the TV series. Photoshopped in there, photoshopped into the first two movies. How clever of them. So uh, as for how there are so many Bosleys, apparently Bosley is a rank within the organization named after Patrick Stewart's character. Aww. <laughs> and angels graduate to be Bosleys. So there are, it turns out that there's not just three Charlie's Angels and one Bosley. There's a bunch of Bosleys, including Michael Strahan. Hmm. And thousands of angels, including Danica Patrick, Ronda Rousey, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Only two of them show up in the movie. I'll let you figure that out. (laughs) Now, does this movie empower women? I honestly cannot see how. And let let me explain this by going to another movie that we've already mentioned a few times. If this was a James Bond film, he would have gotten his gadgets at the beginning of the movie and done the whole damn thing himself. This movie took three angels, several Bosleys, a multitude of assorted men, and quite a few other women and eventually other angels by the end of the film. Where the empowering part comes in, I missed it. Sorry. Um, (laughs) I have, however, seen the Black Widow trailer and found that to be considerably more empowering than the the entirety of this movie. Interesting. Uh, Meanwhile, the movie itself uh, was actually, I mean, was, was it empowering to me? No. My daughter, who falls into the category of girl or woman, uh, no, not to her either, but it was entertaining. Uh, was it a great movie? No, but it was fun, and that's what we need, and we need more fun movies. And check this out. Kristen Stewart, one of the head angels in this, she acted. <gasps> what? She had more than three emotions in this movie. I am so proud of her. She graduated from wood to almost human. I I have to interject. I was actually, and I may still eventually watch this film because I don't really care about the Charlie's Angels TV show back in the day or the movies or anything. But I was intrigued by this because in the trailers, she smiles. It's the first time I've ever seen her smile. And I've seen her on talk shows a few times when she should be relaxed and happy. And I thought her face was going to break. All right, she maybe makes faces at, at, a, at a small <clears throat> child in this movie, or perhaps you know, maybe it's not her, and maybe the people who did the visual effects for that film are the ones who deserve the Oscars because she really looks like she's smiling. So, oh, well, there you go, good for her. So, you know, maybe her showing emotion, maybe that's the empowering part. I guess I don't know. Um, was the was it predictable? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the WWE plot lines are more complicated. Uh, <laughs> I called who the mole was 15 minutes in and I've got my daughter as a witness. Thank you. Um, Now it is set up perfectly, perfectly for a sequel that is not coming to a theater anywhere near you anytime soon, because this film bombed to the point that I was going to review it when it came out, 
but I didn't find out it came out till after it had been out for a month and was already out of theaters. Yeah. Oops. Um, it is, however, now available for streaming straight to your house through Sony, and I'm sure Vudu has it. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if Netflix will have it soon, or you can just get the DVD, whatever. It was a fun movie, a hell of a lot better than Harley Quinn and the Where the wow. Hell is the Batman pity party movie thing that she did. <laughs> I just really did not like that movie. Um, really? But yeah, Charlie's Angels, was. it was not as bad as everyone made it out to be. So there. Amazing and good news. Yeah. Uh, one, yeah. One thing about the box office of both of those movies, and this does bother me, and I didn't go see either of them at the theater, uh, but I wasn't all that particularly interested, is some of it, I wonder how much of it is pushback from people uh, who rail against girl power type films. And granted, whether they actually achieve that or not is besides the point, but that's how they're being marketed. And it's the same people who, you know, didn't like the new Star Wars films because a female is at the core of it. It's the same people who, you know, create petitions to get rid of Brie Larson as Captain Marvel because she dares to speak out about how, you know, empowerment is important. It, you know, it's that. Which it is. Which it is, which is that knee jerk reaction. If I wonder how much of it is uh, just push back against that and how much of it is just, well, the movie's not that great. I, I hope it's all because the movies weren't that great. And, and again, box office success doesn't necessarily have a thing to do with quality. I mean, we all know there have been movies that were huge hits, which were not good movies. And the converse, there are, there are amazing movies, which did almost wow. nothing at the box office. I mean, one of my favorite movies ever, Big Trouble in Little China. And I don't remember off the top of my head now. And I don't remember if it made $7 million or $1.7 million. But it didn't do anything in its initial read. No. And there are tons of movies like that. So it's not all about box office success. But I hope that these are both commercial failures. And apparently Charlie's Angels is at least a success as far as critical res response and uh, normal people's response. I would hope that it's just based on the film itself, not on some concept is like, ooh, I don't want to see this because women shouldn't talk about having more power and being able to do things. It's like, it's that's, got that's girls. Shut yeah, up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that exactly. That that makes makes no sense. It does make no um, sense. Well, actually, you, you know, a lot of the people who do that too are also uh, the ones who rail against homosexuality. And I'm like, okay, you've gotten rid of women. That mm. leaves you with just the guys, and you don't like the guys either. So what? It's all asexual people. <laughs> so we yeah. just got to wait a generation. They can't breed anyway. We'll we'll be fine in about twenty years, yeah. as far as that's concerned. Um. Anyway, long before that. Long before that, there, there's a lot of things that a lot of people need to do before all these asexual people die out. Um, one of the things I'm going to suggest, as I suggest at the end of every show, is getting out and going to see a movie. Captain, we're losing power in the warp engines. I think we should be leaving now. I'm going to go home and sleep with my wife. Uh, and on that unusually harmonious bombshell, it is time to end. I am very disappointed! Man, we have a weird job. It's shameful, but uh, eh, it's a living. And like that, he's gone. My